Hi everybody, welcome to the web scraping tables with Selenium part. Now what we want to do is the following. We want to try scraping data from a disk table. Okay. And as you can see here, for example, on this website, we can store the results in a CSV file and inside a JSON file, but we don't want to make use of these functions because as you know, um, you definitely know a lot of other websites where this two possibilities are not provided and you always have to be independent. Um, apart from this, we want to save the data not even or not just in CSV and JSON, but also in an Excel file and in the Postgres SQL database. Okay, so this is right now the requirement. And again, we want to do everything using Python Selenium and also this Jupyter Notebook IDE. Here I've created this new notebook, named it Scraping Table Selenium, and now it's time to start the imports. So first of all, what do we need? We need to install Selenium, Pandas and the SQL Alchemy. For now, what I want to do is I open up the command prompt and let me start typing in pip install Selenium. This is number one, uh, press and enter. For now, I won't do this because I've already installed Selenium on my computer. So this is actually the first installation. Then installation number two is pandas. Okay, so pip install pandas, click on enter, wait until it's ready. And the last one is the SQL alchemy. Okay, like this, make sure you don't have a typo and now press and enter and wait until this package is installed. Okay. So after this is finished, we can actually minimize the command prompt and start our imports. So first we want to import the web driver module from the Selenium package. So let's type in from Selenium. Once again, from Selenium import web driver. This is number one. Afterwards, we have to import pandas. Okay, so import pandas and let's give it an alias. So pandas as PD. And finally, we have to import the SQL alchemy module. Okay, so these are the three imports. Let me run the cell here. Okay, no error message. And before I proceed, I can actually provide a short comment. Let's say these are the imports. Click on this drop down menu, go to Markdown, then Shift and Enter. And now you have here this beautiful heading. Okay. Now, the next step is we want to store this link inside a variable. Okay, because here we can access this whole table here. Okay, so let me just copy this one. Go back to the notebook and here I want to store the URL. So I'll store URL and I want to provide a variable here. Okay, it's the URL variable. Paste this website and here if you want to, you can again go ahead and provide a short comment. A uh, comment, sorry. I want to say it's the uh, initialize um, yeah, initialization. Okay, I guess this makes most sense. Initialization. Again, from code to markdown, shift enter, and now you have, you have here this beautiful heading. All right. And now, in the next step, what we have to do is we have to initialize the Chrome driver. Okay, here we have our URL. Now it's time to initialize the Chrome driver because, again, you can use um, as a web driver, you can use Chrome, you can use Firefox, you can use Internet Explorer or uh, Microsoft Edge. But for now, I want to go ahead with the uh, Chrome driver. Okay, let's go ahead and do it. So first of all, again, initialize Chrome, Chrome driver. Okay, now I want to uh, make use of a different variable. It's the driver variable and it should equal to web driver. Again, this is what we have imported here. Okay, so web driver dot chrome okay it's this one with capital c webdriver.chrome and now you have to provide the path where you have stored the web driver okay so for me it's inside this c folder here okay so c 
then inside this web driver folder and now this is actually um, the file I want to make use of okay so this is an um, exe file so right click properties you will see here this is the .exe so what I can do as a shortcut um, copy this path here Control C go back to the notebook and paste it actually inside this brackets it's inside this quotes right so this is the path C then we have the web driver and now a backslash and here we can provide this name here of this application okay so it's chrome driver dot exe and this is it so chrome driver dot exe and now you see it's turned from a backslash to a slash this is totally fine and now this should actually be the initialization part here all right so next one um, let me proceed and just run it and let's see what happens here okay and you see here that now this window actually um, opens and here we have actually a notification that Chrome is being controlled by automated test software this means our Chrome driver works as expected okay this is fine so now we have total control to this web driver or to this Chrome driver by using our notebook here okay and now in the next step what we have to do is we have to open up this website here okay inside this web driver all right that means after we have initialized the chrome driver we can make use of it and then go ahead for the get function so it's driver dot get and here we have to provide what website we want to open and it's this one okay and we have stored it inside this url variable so driver get url all right and here i can again provide one short comment open url okay let's see what happens so i will put this window directly next to our chrome driver so let's see what happens here okay so three two one I run this cell now or oh, give me just one second um, I want to do it separately okay so here in a separate cell just for demonstration purpose because now I want to just run this cell and to show you that we have full control of this Chrome driver here so let's go ahead driver get URL and now you see that something happened here let's see what we have but before I do it um, I want to maximize this window that means here inside a next cell um, I want to maximize the window okay so let's do it first of all I want to provide one comment then again let's make use of this driver variable and then use the maximize window um, method here okay so driver dot maximize window run this cell and you see here that now this window got maximized okay and this is what we want to achieve now we have this pop-up here okay or this window and actually we want to click on the agree button okay so let me just show you how we can do it totally automatically let's locate it so go here then do a right click okay not a left click a right click then click on inspect and now let's see how we can locate this button here. You can click on this um, inspect tool, right? Then go to this button. And now you see here with this uh, stuff, we can actually locate this button here. All right, this is actually what we wanted to use. And in this example, I want to go ahead with the X path. That means if I click on control F, you will see here that this small window appears. And now, out of this one, we can build our XPath to be able to locate and interact with this button here, okay? So, I want to go ahead and use a double slash, okay? So, slash, slash. Then, I want to make use of the uh, button tag. So, once again, let's locate it. You see here, we have this button tag. Afterwards, we have, for example, this 
um, class attribute and this here is the value. Okay, this is one of the possibilities how we can build our XPath locator for this button here. Okay, so let me just go ahead and do it. I want to make a double click here to copy the value. Then I want to go ahead with the XPath and build it like this. Okay, so let's see here. We have this button tag class attribute and this is the value. And this is actually the whole syntax of the XPath. And you see here we have one of one that means this expression here is unique okay we can just copy it go back to our browser here close this development tools go to the browser uh, excuse me go to the uh, notebook and inside a different line um, i just can provide a short comment so let's say it's the um, agree step okay and then i want to provide the agree variable here it's driver dot find element and every time we are searching for elements or we want to look at elements we have to uh, make use of a certain selector as you know we have uh, different selectors here and i want to go for the x path okay sorry it's the locator okay so i want to use the x path locator and paste the expression here this is what i want to achieve right now we have the expression inside this variable and now in the next step we can actually interact with this one and i want to use the try and accept block because not every time when you open up this website you will see here this uh, privacy message sometimes it appears sometimes it's not and i don't want to have an error message if we don't see this information here okay therefore i want to use the try and accept block inside the try block i want to go ahead with agree dot click okay because we want to click on this agree button or if it doesn't appear so then we want to use the accept block and just do nothing okay this is it so what do we have here again if this window pops up we want to click on the agree button we have successfully stored it inside this expression here Therefore, we can make use of the click function. And if we don't see this message, we just want to do nothing. Okay, this is the logic behind it. Let's click on the cell, run the cell. And now you see uh, that nothing happens. Let me just take a look what um, happened actually here. So something went wrong and I have to take a look what it is, to be honest. So... I would, su I would suggest let's put everything together um, and just close it for a moment. Okay. So let me just copy this one, paste it here. And now we can run this whole cell. And if this will break again, I have to debug it. Okay. So for now, um, I want to run this cell again here. That's it. Something is opening here. Okay, let's see. Now the window should maximize. Yep, and we were able to click on the agree button. So this is actually it. This is what we wanted to achieve with this lines of code here. Okay, now next step, what we want to do is let's scroll down. And actually, if you want to, you can actually um, locate this button here too. But it's actually not... Um, molesting us or it's not bad for us right now it's not interrupting our work therefore it's not necessary all right so now we want to scrape this column this one this one this one this one this one so all in all we have six columns to scrape and all in all we have 205 rows correct okay so this video is not necessary for us and in the next step we can go ahead and start with the first row and i would say i can pause the video here okay so video one was the initialization part and in the next video we are going to make our hands dirty and scrape this whole table okay so stay tuned and i see you in a few moments